Hello, everybody. Welcome to Weather on the Go's weather forecast here. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday morning out there and a good start to their weekend. If you guys have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button down below. We're only 25 subscribers away from hitting 500 here, our goal. So please, if you guys that definitely would, uh, you know, subscribe down below, that would mean the world to me. So thank you very much here as well. In this video, I will be talking to you guys here about your tropical weather update, as well as kind of looking ahead to early and middle portion of August here as we turn the page to August. August here we have the potential for some severe weather and a large massive heat wave across the portions of the middle of the country uh, with some 100 degree temperatures expected even in the Midwest. So thank you guys for joining here this morning. We're looking here at the tropics here, and yeah, we got two named systems across the eastern Pacific Basin, one of them being Tropical Storm Georgette, and then Frank. We got Hurricane Frank now across portions of the eastern Pacific Basin as well. Both are over the open water here, uh, you know, of the eastern Pacific Basin, so we'll kind of get, the, uh, you know, dive into the details here about these systems. Looking kind of at the current satellite imagery here, you can see Tropical Storm Georgette, very compact system here, very small in nature across portions here of the eastern Pacific Basin, but just to its east, we got a larger system here, and that is actually Hurricane Frank, and you can see kind of some of these arms of convection kind of wrapping around, um, you know, the main parent low pressure system. That is actually the hurricane breathing a little bit, so we definitely have a healthy hurricane moving across portions of the eastern Pacific Basin here currently, and this looks to continue here through the next few days. Looking first here at Tropical, uh, tropical Storm Georgette, you can see it's not really going to be moving too much. It's kind of going to be moving more to the southwest and then kind of start to, you know, turn its way to the north and east here the next couple of days. And it's really going to be staying kind of at a, you know, medium grade type of, a, you know, tropical storm system here across portions of the open waters of the eastern Pacific. And then eventually here kind of weaken to a tropical depression as we head here into that Monday and Tuesday time frame early next week. But looking at Hurricane Frank, yeah, Hurricane Frank is a very robust system. We got winds sustained here at 80 miles per hour, moving west-northwest to 10 miles per hour here. Um, currently, you know, her, uh, a Category 1 hurricane right now. This will continue to be a Category 1 hurricane, if not maybe even a Category 2 hurricane as we head through the weekend and then start to weaken toward that tropical storm and then uh, even that, you know, tropical depression status as we head into early and middle portion of next week. And kind of concerning some of the, you know, water temperatures, the sea surface temperatures across the eastern Pacific Basin here to support these systems. We still have that here. We still have some warmer waters off, the, you know, the coast here of the Baja of California and off the western coast here of Mexico. So we still have some warm waters to work with, especially with Hurricane Frank. And that's why it looks to, you know, remain at hurricane status as we head here into early next week. But concerning the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf guys, yeah, very quiet across, you know, this entire region, uh, at least for the next 48 hours, if not the next five days or more here. Very quiet across the Atlantic here with that high pressure system really dominating. You're not seeing a lot of open waves, you know, moving across the southern Atlantic. We're not seeing any open waves moving through the Caribbean or the Gulf or even the western Atlantic either. And that is just due to the fact that we have that strong high pressure system kind of anchored across portions of the central Atlantic. We do kind of are watching kind of a little bit of a wave moving off of Western Africa and kind of moving off the coast of Africa the next couple of days. We will kind of see what this does, but I really, the expectations do indicate that this will kind of fall apart as it kind of moves off the coast of Africa as this, all this drier, you know, drier Saharan dust continue to kind of move off of Western Africa here and over the open waters of the Southern and Central Atlantic uh, with the steering current here of this high pressure system. But also kind of looking at this as we get towards, you know, the second week here in August, there are still some signs that we could have some tropical moisture moving up across portions of the Gulf, the Western Caribbean here, and perhaps uh, near the Florida region. Uh, we'll continue to watch this again. There's not a clear consensus whether or not we'll see, you know, a tropical depression, a storm or a hurricane or anything like that. Uh, but we're going to continue to watch it as there are some signals that we could have some tropical moisture, at least here at the very least, move up here into portions of the Western Caribbean and into the Gulf here as well. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this. Again, we're not talking about a storm or a hurricane or anything like that. Just kind of giving you a heads up on, yeah, there could be the potential of some tropical rainfall potential and at least some tropical moisture moving up here into the Gulf as we get to that second week in August. Looking here at the current alerts out there, we still got those flash flood watches across portions of northern Arizona, northern and central New Mexico, the northern Texas panhandle and into portions of Oklahoma there. 
Still expecting those monsoonal rains to continue in a big way as we head here through the weekend. We also have those heat alerts here widespread across Oregon, Idaho, western Montana, getting down through Oregon, Nevada, and northern California with widespread heat advisories and excessive heat warnings across some of these areas as well. Even some red flag warnings here for portions of southwestern Oregon and northwestern California where they're so dry out in those areas here with a stronger wind gust. Yeah, we could be seeing some you know wildfires starting to spark up here across Across those areas as well. But looking kind of up a little bit higher up in the atmosphere, we still got that ridge kind of centered across the southwestern United States, across the west coast here. And we got a little bit of a dip in the jet stream here across the Midwest and the Great Lakes, kind of keeping some of these areas cool here for the weekend. Um, a little bit of a subtle trough across these areas. And again, that trough is important because it will force that ridge to kind of amplify continuously across the Pacific Northwest, bringing that widespread heat. You can see the heat as we head into this afternoon, widespread 100s to 110s across portions of Washington and Oregon State, getting down through California, as well as uh, the Idaho region and Nevada, a uh, widespread heat there as well. We are going to be starting to heat up up a little bit across eastern Montana into the Dakotas as well with some low to mid 90s here starting to you know develop across these regions as we head into late this afternoon and you still got that heat down into Texas here southern portions there of Oklahoma but look at that guys welcome news across Kansas into portions of Missouri where we'll actually be seeing high temperatures in the 70s across portions of southern Kansas and western Missouri here in, uh, this afternoon so that is a welcome sight for sure uh, but that won't remain the case so definitely don't get too used to this guys because we got a big heat wave on the way. As we kind of move into Sunday, though, here, kind of the end of the weekend, we still got that signal here for a little bit of that broad kind of, you know, subtle trough across portions of the northern U.S. and toward the Great Lakes. We still got that ridge across the southwestern United States and the west coast, and that will continue with some heat across portions of the western United States and kind of starting to move its way toward the northern plains. You got 98 up there toward portions of Rapid City. Um, you got portions of, you know, down toward DFW in Dallas-Fort Worth uh, near 100 degrees, 102 in Wichita Falls. Yeah. We're starting. To, you know, we're going to still be in the heat here across the central and southern plains, uh, but we're really going to start heating up across the northern plains and even the upper Midwest as we head into the last day of July here, Sunday, July 31st. And kind of considering here, looking at uh, some of the precipitation here as we move into this afternoon as well, uh, we got that stationary boundary setting up across the Red River here in Oklahoma and North Texas, and then kind of stretching its way over towards the Mid-South and also the kind of the Southeast United States as well. Um, still some scattered showers and storms developing across those areas. We got that monsoon season, you know, holding strong across the Four Corners region as we head to this afternoon as well. So kind of timing this out and what you can expect for precipitation as we go through the rest of today here uh, during the early afternoon, you can expect kind of a little bit of a complex of showers and storms propagating across the lower Missouri Valley and northeastern portions there of Oklahoma as we head into the, you know, one, two, three o'clock time frame here this afternoon. But as we move toward late this afternoon and toward the dinner time frame, so around four or five o'clock, you can expect some, you know, lingering showers and storms moving across southern Missouri, much of western and northwestern Arkansas, getting toward the Little Rock area, Fort Smith, and getting over toward portions there of Jonesboro, Arkansas with time. We also have some scattered showers and storms developing right along that stationary boundary uh, from the Carolinas all the way back through the Atlanta metro, getting back here into Jackson, Mississippi, portions there of Birmingham, uh, you know, Tuscaloosa, and getting back towards uh, Monroe, Louisiana as well. We could, we could have some storms try to develop along the Red River there to North Texas and to Southern Oklahoma. But again, if any coverage does start to develop here, it'll be more kind of widely scattered to isolated across these areas. We're not talking about a big convective system or anything like that. Uh, and then Back to the west, yeah, we got a lot of that monsoonal weather really heating up at the peak heating of the day later this afternoon as well. And then as we kind of move toward the early evening hours, again, we got a couple of kind of lines of storms moving through portions of the Mid-South through Arkansas. A couple storms bubbling up near the Red River here into far northern Texas and more so here into south uh, southeastern Oklahoma as well with that monsoon season here continuing um, again across portions of the Four Corners as we head into this afternoon. And then as we kind of move into the overnight hours toward your Sunday morning, you can expect some more showers and storms kind of bubbling up right along that stationary boundary across portions of Oklahoma into Arkansas there, southern Missouri, and over toward the Tennessee Valley. We are also watching another feature here to the north, an upper-level trough kind of, you know, kicking a cold front across portions here of the uh, upper Midwest and northern plains. Maybe a couple showers and storms across portions of the Dakotas into western Minnesota overnight here into Sunday morning as well. But looking at the precipitation amounts for your Saturday today, uh, yeah, we got the complex of storms, like I said, moving through the lower Missouri Valley, through the Mid-South, through Arkansas there. Uh, yeah, we could see some widespread, you know, one to three inches of rain near the Fort Smith area, getting over toward the Little Rock area as well. 
maybe some decent rains just north of Oklahoma City Metro up toward the Tulsa area as well, getting up towards, uh, you know, Joplin, Springfield, Missouri, some of these areas. And then along that stationary boundary from the, you know, the Carolinas here, Columbia, South Carolina, uh, portions there, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, getting back through the Atlanta Metro, you know, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, back toward the Jackson, Mississippi area. Yeah, we could be seeing some kind of widely scattered showers and storms, and they could add up to anywhere between a quarter inch to up to maybe an inch of rain in some localized areas, especially across the outer banks of the Carolinas. And then again, across those monsoonal areas, yeah, you can expect some decent rains across portions of New Mexico, southwestern Colorado, and much of Arizona here as well as potentially far southern Utah with some, you know, rainfall amounts kind of averaging around a half an inch in some of these areas as well. And looking kind of at the flooding kind of uh, as we move through later today, we still have the Weather Prediction Center forecasting a marginal to slight risk for flash flooding across portions of, you know, the Deep South all the way over through portions of the Southern Plains into those monsoonal areas into the Four Corners region. Again, some, you know, isolated to widely scattered instances of some maybe some flash flooding out there as we head into later on today. We also do have a threat for severe weather in a couple different spots. One up towards, the, you know, the Northern Plains up into North Dakota and Northeastern Montana in association with that upper level trough kind of moving uh, kind of over top that ridge that's centered across the West Coast and the Southwest United States. We also do have kind of a risk for some isolated, strong to severe storms firing up across southeastern uh, Oklahoma, much of Arkansas, extreme northern Louisiana and northeast Texas, so the Texarkana area, Little Rock, and then into portions there of far northern Louisiana. Maybe a couple of storms that could produce some large hail and maybe some damaging downburst winds as well. As we move into your Sunday, though, guys, yeah, we have that kind of stationary boundary starting to retreat northward just a little bit as a warm front uh, moving back to the north toward the Ohio Valley and getting up toward Oklahoma, lower Missouri Valley as well. Well, up to the north, we do have kind of that low pressure system with an upper level trough, a pretty decent, uh, you know, a cold front moving across the northern plains and the upper Midwest as we head into Sunday as well. And of course, we still have that monsoonal weather going strong across portions of the southwestern United States uh, from, you know, New Mexico into Colorado, Utah there, Arizona and Nevada and portions of southern and central California as we move into Sunday as well. So kind of timing this out using, you know, the HRRR model as we move into early Sunday afternoon. Again, watching a couple features, we got that warm front moving back north here, uh, the, you know, the stationary boundary moving back north as a warm front across the Mid-South and the Tennessee and Ohio Valleys, bringing some scattered showers and storms right along that here, maybe some heavy rainfall in localized spots. Also watching the upper level trough with kind of that cold front extending down through portions of the Dakotas into portions of western Nebraska there, bringing more, you know, coverage of storms across western Minnesota and the Dakotas as we head into early Sunday afternoon. That will propagate to the east here, peak heating of the day, still seeing some widely scattered showers across the deep south, seeing the monsoon weather continue very strong across the southwest. And then we got here along that cold front, some scattered showers and storms across portions of, you know, northern Minnesota getting into the eastern Dakotas and perhaps northwestern Wisconsin later later on Sunday afternoon. And then there is a signal here that we kind of get into that peak heating time frame along that cold front. If we can have kind of some cold pool aloft kind of start to develop along the, you know, an outflow boundary or anything like that starting to develop along the leading edge of some storms that could organize, then sure, yeah, we could see some, you know, some more scattered damaging wind potential here getting into northwestern Wisconsin um, and into portions of eastern Minnesota up toward the Duluth area and then getting up toward portions north and west of La, uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, maybe wind gusts that could be over 60 miles per hour with this complex if it does develop. So we'll continue to watch that as well. Um, again, uh, but again, yeah, like I said, mo monsoonal weather will be very strong across the southwestern United States. And then along that, you know, warm frontal boundary moving to the north across the Ohio Valley. Yes, you can still be expecting more of that uh, heavy rainfall potential in scattered instances. Looking here to your Sunday, yeah, the, the Tennessee Valley here from much of Tennessee, southern and south central portions of Kentucky, getting over toward the mid-south there as well here. Yeah, we're starting to see some widespread footprint there of one to two inches of rain, maybe locally three inches, especially in middle Tennessee around the Nashville area, getting over toward Crossville, Tennessee. And then again, along that cold front to the north, yeah, you can be expecting eight rainfall amounts to average right around a quarter to half an inch of rain in spots, a little bit heavier up into central Ontario where the main lift is here with that low level, uh, you know, or sorry, that upper level trough. Um, and then again, we still have that monsoonal weather continuing across the southwestern United States as well. Concerning the flooding threat, yeah, we still have that slight risk for flash flooding across the Mid-South, or yeah, the Mid-South getting into the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley, and the Mid-Atlantic. 
Along that cold front could have some isolated here flooding rains across portions of the Arrowhead of Minnesota. And then again, another slight risk to marginal risk here for excessive rainfall and flash flooding from the Weather Prediction Center, uh, forecasting that here across portions of Arizona and western New Mexico as well. Concerning the severe weather threat, we have a little bit of a threat potential for portions of, you know, eastern and southeastern uh, North Carolina, maybe in a storm or two that could produce some, you know, damaging downburst winds there. I'm more concerned about this area here up into Minnesota, northwestern Wisconsin, with that complex of storms I was showing you that could develop Sunday afternoon and propagate slowly to the eastward uh, into northwestern Wisconsin. These could be, you know, damaging wind producers with wind gusts over 60 miles per hour, probably not too much of hail producers. I think it'll be mainly outflow driven, so we'll probably see more of the damaging wind risk. Again, this could be upgraded. We'll have to wait and see. Again, the slight risk is possible potentially uh, with at least what I'm looking at the HRRR model right now. Uh, but if, uh, again, this is a day or so out, so we'll continue to keep an eye on that. But heading into early next week, we still got that trough continuing kind of subtly across southeastern Canada. We got that ridge, however, across the western United States over the Rocky Mountains starting to slowly shift to the east, guys. And this will open up the doors for some widespread heat eventually here in the portion of the center of the country in the next week. That will continue here on the Tuesday time frame. And then even on Wednesday here, uh, we're seeing that you know ridge centered right back here into the central and southern plains from north Texas all the way up through portions of southern uh, southern Nebraska. We do have kind of a trough, an upper level trough starting to dig down from portions of British Columbia toward the Pacific Northwest. And we also got a little bit of a trough here, a stronger trough at that up into portions of so uh, southeastern Canada. These will you know work both in conjunction to kind of squeeze this atmosphere up to kind of amplify this ridge just a little bit across the middle of the country, and this will set up here some widespread 90s and 100 degree temperatures starting here early next week. Looking at here at Monday here, the first day of meteorolog uh, meteorological fall, yeah, Monday, uh, August 1st, widespread 90s and 100s here. It's not going to be feeling like fall quite yet, uh, feeling like the middle of summer here from, you know, portions of Montana all the way down here into portions of the central and southern plains. Again, you can start to see the Pacific Northwest starting to slowly cool down here on your Monday and really starting to cool down up there here on your Tuesday, August 2nd, while the heat starts to build to the east here across the, you know, the Midwest, the Central and Southern Plains. Yeah, widespread 100s all the way from portions there of the Dakotas all the way down to Texas. 101 here for Rapid City, 101 near the Omaha area, 102 for Dallas here and 103 for Wichita Falls, 94 for Little Rock. So yeah, we're really starting to heat up across these areas to the east. And then that just continues to expand as we head toward the middle of next week here on Wednesday, August 3rd, 97 in Chicago, 94 in Milwaukee here, 101 in Des Moines, um, 100 degrees in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, 103 in Omaha, Nebraska. So a lot of these areas here that haven't seen the 100 degree heat this summer will start to feel that extreme heat as we head toward the middle of next week. And the Climate Prediction Center here, their forecast does agree with that as well. We got widespread heat across the Midwest through the Ohio Valley and portions of the Northeast during that, you know, August 4th through the 8th time frame. Under the, underneath that monsoon, you can expect some kind of, you know, slightly below normal temperatures, again, under those areas, as well as that, you know, upper level trough kind of digging into the Pacific Northwest, bringing those cooler temperature anomalies up there as well. Again, underneath that ridge, yeah, I'm not going to see much of that rainfall. You're going to see that sinking air, so you're not going to see much in the way of storms. I mean, yeah, sure, you could see a couple of storm complexes kind of trying to revolve around the northern periphery here of the heat across potentially the upper Midwest or the western Great Lakes during this period, but I really think overall here kind of a drier period for much here of the Corn Belt through portions of the South, uh, you know, Central Plains into portions of the Missouri Valley as well. Where across the West, yeah, from the Intermountain West, especially down through Utah, Eastern uh, Nevada, much of Southwestern uh, Colorado, Northwestern New Mexico, and North Central Arizona, a lot of these areas are going to be seeing well above normal precipitation during that August 4th through the 8th period with a lot of rainfall there as well. And then getting into the August 6th through 12th period, yeah, widespread heat continuing to you know remain in place across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and Northeast. While underneath that monsoonal weather, uh, we're kind of seeing that cooler normal, te cooler than normal temperatures down towards Phoenix and getting down toward the Albuquerque area, potentially up as far north here as this, you know, the Salt Lake City area, Las Vegas, and into portions there of the Los Angeles area. But again, we'll start to build that heat just a little bit across the Pacific Northwest, but not as hot as what you've been seeing lately. But again, we'll start to build that heat toward that second week here in August. 
And underneath that monsoon, still widespread, you know, rainfall potential across the western United States. But underneath that ridge, we're not really seeing much rainfall here to the north. Maybe a couple storm complexes we'll have to keep an eye on, but overall a drier period than normal. And then getting down towards the, you know, coastal areas here in Texas. So south Texas and along the southeast coast here from Houston all the way back down towards Corpus Christi, southern Texas there. We're going to have to watch this during the August 6th through 12th period here, like I alluded to here in the tropical weather update. We could be talking about some potential tropical rainfall trying to move northwestward here into portions of southeast Texas as we move into that second week in August. Again, still a little far out to know, but definitely the potential is there, so we'll continue to watch that as we get closer. Looking at the drought monitor, though, yeah, we're seeing some widespread, severe, extreme, and exceptional drought here. The severe droughts in that orange-shaded color, the red-shaded color is that extreme drought, and then the maroon reds or the dark reds are actually uh, the exceptional drought, which is the worst category of drought you could have and yeah that's pretty widespread across much of texas much of utah nevada california and much of oregon as well um, and again a lot of the drought is persisting across the southwestern and western united states we even have kind of a, a concerning drought starting to build across the lower missouri valley and some of the corn belt areas here as well with a you know extreme drought building there a couple extreme and severe drought areas building into western and northwestern iowa through uh, nebraska and the corn belt there and we're also seeing kind of a little bit persistence of a drought across the portion of Boston getting up into southern portions of you know Maine through you know Vermont New Hampshire getting down through Rhode Island Connecticut these areas along the I-95 corridor with Boston actually under a severe drought so they could use some rainfall across the northeast here as well uh, so we'll continue to watch that as we move forward but kind of looking at that storm track as we move towards that you know the last couple days here in July going through the August 5th period yeah we're seeing that storm track shifting well up to the north across central and southern Canada uh, we got some lingering rain here across that stationary boundary moving northward as a warm front still some you know above normal precipitation there but right in between we still have that drier than normal signal here across portions of the midwest and then again down towards texas as well as we kind of get into the second week of August here, the signal is there from the climate forecasting systems model uh, to kind of move some of these storm complexes a little farther south here as the northern and northeastern periphery of this ridge starts to break down across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley. And that could send a couple storm complexes, maybe a couple strong storm complexes with damaging winds and large hail through as we move into that second week in August. So we'll watch that while the Pacific Northwest looks to start to kind of dry out a little bit as we kind of move into that second week in August as well. And again, we'll We'll kind of keep an eye on the Gulf of Mexico towards southeastern Texas here. Again, probably not looking at a storm, but some tropical moisture definitely could be moving into the area. So we'll definitely continue to watch that as we get closer. Looking at the La Nina index here, guys, look at all the way back to May. We kind of had a stronger La Nina here, a kind of a moderately strong La Nina at minus 1.0. It did kind of weaken a little bit here, kind of getting very close to that zero, you know, 0, 0.0 mark, which is actually Enso neutral. But now we're starting to kind of take a turn back towards a stronger La Nina here the last couple of weeks and really just the last couple of days. And this actually continues here. The potential is there for this La Nina to strengthen to almost record levels as we head into early early to middle fall. So we'll definitely continue to watch this here as we move through the next several weeks, as this will be very important in kind of dissecting the weather pattern throughout the United States as well. Looking at the kind of La Nina conditions here, you can see a big burst of some cooler waters across portions of the coast here of South America, and then kind of moving its way westward across the equatorial Pacific. Just to the north of Hawaii, we got a big kind of bullseye there of some very strong heating across the surface, you know, the sea surface temperatures. And if you kind of follow my mouse here, guys, you can see that we have that ridge north of Hawaii and then some cooler anomalies here to the west coast of the United States that we haven't seen in a few weeks. So that will force a trough across portions there of the Pacific Northwest. And then that ridge will build to the east because of that here of those cooler waters off of the Pacific Northwest and the west coast of the United States. So again, the La Nina has some direct impacts here on the United States' weather forecast. So we'll continue to kind of keep an eye on this and the strength of it here through the next several weeks and keep you guys posted. Again, thank you for watching. I know this was a long video here trying to keep you you know updated on all of the severe weather out there all of the heat here and all of that you know flooding rains on uh, kind of giving you a kind of a look at the tropical weather as well so remember to like my video give me a thumbs up down below also leave your comments questions concerns below i'll be able to get to those later on today and remember to subscribe to the youtube channel guys 
I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers. That's my new goal here, guys. So please, we only need 25 more subscribers. So please just hit that subscribe button, guys, and it would help out very much. I will have your full fall forecast preview as we head into August 1st. Again, I might take tomorrow off for a video, but I will be back here on Monday afternoon for a video as well, or Monday morning, rather. Um, so we'll continue to watch that um, forecast as we get a little bit closer. But again, guys, I will take Sunday off for my video. I will be back Monday morning for a new video here um, with a full forecast, including your fall forecast preview here as well. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching and have a great weekend out there.